chapter 35, Dental Handpieces and Accessories. When attached to a specific handpiece, rotary instruments operate at different speeds to accomplish different functions in the cutting, polishing, and finishing of tooth structure in the restoration process. The evolution of the rotary equipment. In the 1940s the was the introduction of rotary instruments. They were belt-driven handpiece and the, develop the development of diamond cutting burrs. In the 1950s, the invention of the tungsten carbide and the development of the air-driven turbine handpiece. Dental handpieces. The dental handpiece is the most frequently used instrument in restorative dentistry. It provides power to a rotary instrument that is used to complete the actual cutting or polishing of tooth structure and castings. Keep in mind that the dental handpieces, um, there's a low speed and a high speed. Uh, you are not allowed to use the high speed inside the patient's mouth. You're not allowed to use the low speed inside the patient's mouth either. However, sometimes you will have to like when polishing um, a temp. The low speed handpiece. Designed in two sizes, the standard length and shorty. Speeds range from 10,000 to 40,000 rotations per minute. So these are also called RPMs. Uh, the rotary instrument, which is the burr, can be positioned to operate in both a forward and a backward movement. And this is the low speed hand piece. This piece that goes here and it goes attached to a motor. The uses of the low speed hand piece, clinical, the removal of soft decay and fine finishing of a cavity preparation, finishing and polishing of a restoration, the coronal polishing and removal of stains. So what this means is when they do the profies, like when you do the cleaning on kids, you use the slow speed for polishing the coronal portion of the tooth, which coronal we said that is the part of the tooth that you can actually see in the mouth, and it re also removes stains. Uh, for porcelain adjustments, when you do seats, since seats are the when you're putting on the permanent uh, restorations such as a crown or a bridge, and also for root canal treatments. And in the laboratory for trimming and contouring of temporary crowns, okay, and you and you will be doing uh, most of this trimming and relining of removable partials and dentures. If you ever work with a dentist that does prosthodontics. Or if you work, if you decide to go into specialty and you actually work with a prosthodontist, you will be the one that will be trimming and making adjustments to partials and dentures, and you will have to use the low speed for this. And trimming and contouring of orthodontic appliances. The straight attachment. So slides onto the low speed motor and it locks into place. It's most commonly used for laboratory procedures and to trim provisionals and additional acrylic prostheses made outside of the mouth. So the straight piece, um, the straight piece or the straight cone nose, the straight nose cone, which is also another name for it, um, is used for the um, basically the acrylic burrs or bigger burrs, and it's used for outside of the mouth for temporaries or for provision, uh, you know, trim provisionals, which are temporaries and for doing stuff with acrylic, like adjustments of partials or dentures outside of the mouth. The contra angle attachment is slides onto the low speed motor and it locks into place and then hence the name contra angle. The angle of the attachment is designed to allow the operator intraoral access with easier adaptation to tooth surfaces. So it's basically on an angle, and this is what you will use for doing profies or uh, cleanings on children or to polish temporaries um, it, when they're already inside of the mouth uh, for like anterior teeth. And it's an easier access because it's at an angle. So this attachment holds latch type rotary instruments, latch type endodontic files, latch type profi cuffs, and latch type mandrels. And latch type, um, we'll see a, uh, a figure or a picture of that, and then we'll know exactly what it is. And once you see that there's a rotary instrument or um, any type of small attachment, a burr, anything that has that little latch, you'll know that it only goes on the contra angle. And then there's also the prophylaxis angle, 
which are disposable profi cups and is used during polishing procedures to hold the prophylaxis cup and bristle brush. There's two types. There's a plastic disposable profi angle, and then there's a metal profi angle, and it depends. Your office can use uh, the disposable ones like this, and you just attach it to the contra angle. Um, and then there's ones that the contra angle, this part is metal, and then you just attach the little rubber cup into the latch. So it depends, it's office preference. The high speed hand piece, okay, so the design of it, it's one piece unit with a slight curve. It's operated by air pressure and it operates at speeds as high as 450,000 rotations per minute. It maintains a water coolant system because we said, we said um, anytime the dentist works with the high speed, the high speed shoots water because it has to maintain the tooth cool so that you don't um, overheat the nerve of the tooth and friction grip locking system for rotary instruments. So these actually do have like a little locking mechanism. Once you put the burr inside, it'll lock and then you have to press a button or um, sometimes a key if you're using older high speeds in order to um, take the burr out. And it also, some of them also have fiber optic lighting. And fiber, fiber optic lighting means that the handpiece itself has like a little, like a mini tiny flashlight inside that helps the dentist see when they're working in the mouth. So this is an example of a high speed handpiece. It's one piece and it's a little, it has like a little angle and then the burr goes in here and the burrs, um, this little thing here is actually what you press to attach and detach the burrs. So the uses of the high speed handpiece, it's used for removal of decay, the removal of an old or faulty restoration, the reduction of the crown portion of a tooth in preparation for a crown or bridge, in preparation of an outline and retention grooves for a new restoration, and finishing or polishing of a restoration, and the sectioning of a tooth during surgery. Uh, so they'll talk about surgical burrs, or you will find out later on about surgical burrs if you ever work with a oral surgeon or with an, uh, an actual general dentist that does um, extractions. The water coolant system. So the extreme high speed of the burr or stone attachment attached to the high speed handpiece can generate frictional heat on a tooth, possibly causing damage to the pulp. So the high speed handpiece is designed to handle a water coolant system. Okay, the tooth and the burr are constantly sprayed with cool water while operating. And the water spray also helps remove debris from the tooth preparation and allows the operator for a better visibility. Also keep in mind that when you do um, the profi cleanings, the, the cleanings for the children, the the, bur the the little tip that they use, the little rubber tip that they use, even though it's not used on a high speed, if you leave it in, a, in the same spot for a while, it can overheat the tooth and it can actually cause damage to the baby tooth because baby teeth have actually have bigger um, pulp canals than adult teeth have. So it's easier for you to damage the nerve of those teeth if you overheat it. Burr adaptation. Burrs for high speed hand pieces have a different locking system than those for low speed hand pieces. The high speed hand pieces operate with a friction grip device. Some older hand pieces require the use of a burr changing device. For others with a release built into the head of the hand piece, a burr changing device is not required. So this is what I mentioned earlier. If um, there's a little button on the back of the handpiece and you just press that button and it'll release the burr. However, if you're working in an older office or with an older doctor and they've had these hand pieces for ages, there are some hand pieces that require, actually it's like a little key, it's a little device that you put on at the end on the back of the head of the high speed and you, or in order to uh, be able to release the burr. So this is what the burr changing device is. Uh, fiber optic lighting, so high speed hand pieces are equipped with a fiber optic light that is mounted in the head of the hand piece and the light ports near the burr deliver the proper amount of light directly onto the operating site. Not all doctors use this, but there are some that do. Ultrasonic hand piece, so the design of this, it attaches to the dental unit for water or has its own self-contained water or medicament supply. It's powered by electricity, is used for scaling and root planing and prophylaxis appointments. So usually for the ultrasonic handpiece, the hygienists are the ones that use this, uh, unless you have a doctor in the office that does the cleanings. 
This is what they're talking about. Um, so attachment is similar in appearance to scaling instruments and it delivers a pulsating spray of light. So this actually vibrates and it um, it loosens a hard calculus on the teeth. So laser hand piece, it uses a beam of laser light to cauterize soft tissue or vaporize decay to structure. Cauterize just means that it, it burns the soft tissue usually for um, to stop bleeding. Resemblance to a standard hand piece, water and air to cool the tooth and keep the area clean. And it benefits include painlessness and not having to wait for anesthesia to work. The precautions of laser hand pieces do not sharply bend or twist the fiber optic cable. Do not touch the exposed fiber optic cable. Do not touch the end of the fiber optic cable connector and keep the connecting parts clean because of, after all it's a laser so you can burn yourself. Air abrasion hand piece. It's a small version of a sandblaster. It's designed to remove stains and tooth decay. It's high pressure delivery of aluminum, aluminum oxide particles through a small probe. It removes enamel, dentin, and restorative materials without compromising healthy, healthy tooth structure. So the air abrasion handpiece, sometimes uh, the hygienists use this with baking soda. And this kind of, uh, kind of sandblasts the teeth and it removes some stains and some tooth decay. Uses of the air abrasion handpiece. It's preparation of teeth for sealants, the removal of ex external stains, which means outside of the teeth. Uh, it can be used for class one through six preparations, endodontic axis, crown margins, or the preparation of the tooth surface for the cementation of a cast restoration, such as a crown veneer. So basically what it does, it kind of roughens up the, um, the enamel surface of the teeth. So we also have the laboratory handpiece, which operates at speeds as high as 20,000 RPMs, uses laboratory burrs, and greater torque than that of handpieces used in orally. So the laboratory burrs are kind of like the regular high-speed burrs, but much bigger, and they can only go in the laboratory handpiece, and they can also go in the straight, uh, in the slow, uh, the slow handpiece. Handpiece maintenance, general considerations. Wear personal protective equipment and follow universal precautions. Clean debris from the external surface. Clean the internal components of the handpiece. Handpiece must be dry before being packaged. Wrap the handpiece for sterilization. Sterilize the handpiece. Wipe the light port on the fiber optic with an alcohol swab to remove any excess lubricant. And once you get into the office, they will let you know exactly what they what the procedure is or what the process is to sterilize hand pieces because not all hand pieces are sterilized the same. Um, you probably will need to uh, lube them. You need to spray them after you wash them. You need to dry them, put them in a baggie. Sometimes maybe they don't want you to put them in a baggie, etc. Sterilization procedure sheets. So sterilization instructions vary not only between manufacturers, but also between different models made by the same manufacturer. So use of a sterilization procedure sheet is one way to avoid errors in handpiece sterilization. So exactly what I was saying, not all hand pieces are sterilized the same way. So when you get into the office, they will let you know how they want you to sterilize these hand pieces. Now we're going to talk about rotary cutting instruments. There are three basic parts to a rotary instrument. The shank, which is the portion that fits into the handpiece. So there can be a straight shank, there could be a latch type, and there could be a fric uh, friction grip shank. The neck is the portion of the rotary instrument that connects the shank to the head. And obviously the head is the cutting, polishing, or or finishing portion in the head. This is the working end. And this is the um, the latch type because it has this little latch here. This is the one that goes on the in the contra-angle because the contra-angle has a little latch that you close and it'll lock the burr in place. So dental burrs. All rotary instruments with sharp cutting head uses include preparing the tooth, excavating the decay, finishing cavity walls, finishing restoration surfaces, 
removing old fillings, finishing crown preparations, separating crowns and bridges, and adjusting and correcting acrylic temporary crowns. And there's also many different types of fur shapes. So when discussing the shape of a burr, you are referring to the contour or the design of the head of the burr. Burrs are manufactured in a variety of shapes and each shape is available in a variety of sizes. A burr will have a name, a series of numbers attached to a shape and a purpose for use. So now we have the diamond rotary instruments. The diamond burrs are often used for crown preparations. Diamond burrs have a metal base with flecks of industrial diamonds embedded into the base. The most frequently selected diamond burrs include the round, which provides access to the pulp chamber, the flat end taper, which reduces tooth structure during a crown preparation, the flame, which reduces, reduces tooth structure in preparation for crown, and the wheel, which makes subgingival bevels in a crown preparation. The diamond rotary instruments, because they have diamonds, uh, like little diamond particles, this is the fastest cutting diamond. I mean, burr that you can use. Finishing rotary instruments. A finishing burr is similar in appearance to the cutting burr, except the number of blades or flutes in the working end of the finishing burr is increased. The greater the number of cutting surfaces on the head of a burr, the greater it is polishing or finishing capability. There are uh, ones such as tapered, round, or flame shaped. So this is the these are finish these are examples of finishing burr. So this is the round burr, the flame the flame uh, burr, and obviously it looks kind of like the flame. Tapered and tape what tapered means basically it means that it's um it, it gets thinner or more narrow towards the top. So it starts out wide and then it gets thinner as it goes up. Okay, there's the pear shaped. I don't know why it's called pair but it's a pair a cylinder and then the round end tapered because this is tapered maybe not as much as this one but it's still a little bit bigger wider on the bottom and then it gets thinner and then it has the round end here so abrasive rotary instruments the most varied of the rotary instruments there's many types of abrasive material are applied to many shapes to create a flexible working surface that can be adapted to the contour of a tooth or restoration abrasive materials are made in shapes ranging from discs and stones to points and strips okay and these are the different types of rotary instruments or abrasive rotary instruments these are the ones that are points and these are usually made of like flexible rubber and these are more for polishing. So these are silicone carbide and it produces like a rough surface. It's available in wheels, points and sconces. And the colors vary from gray, green to black. And the colors vary of um, depending on the type of abrasion that you want. It's kind of like sandpaper. As the numbers go down, um, I believe it's like the thinner the sanding is i believe i'm not sure and then b these are the rubber points and they come in varying colors depending on their abrasiveness like i said the brown is the most abrasive and with green having less abrasiveness and then the white is a polishing point so this is what you would use to polish and then the cuddle bone is most often adhered to discs and points and is used for final finishing and polishing of the restoration. And you usually use like a special uh, cream or a special solution to polish the restoration. So accessory attachments for rotary instruments. Okay, and these are discs. These are actual like little uh, sandpaper discs and they go attached to these mandrels here. And then these mandrels are attached to the contra angle if they're latch type. You can also use these mandrels on the straight nose cone or on the, on the slow hand piece if they don't have a latch. Abrasive discs and wheels are supplied separately and are not attached to a shank. So a mandrel is used to attach these abrasives to the dental hand piece. And this is the mandrel here. This is you attach these discs to the top of this. You kind of like screw them on. Because these things are disposable, you need to be able to take these off and then always use new discs. Mandrels are designed according to different types of shank, 
so that they may be used in both low speed and hand, high speed hand pieces. Laboratory rotary instruments. So laboratory burrs have a longer shank and a larger head than dental burrs because they are used outside of the mouth. Laboratory burrs are used in the low speed handpiece for functions such as cutting and polishing of acrylic. And the acrylic burr is the burr that is the most commonly used in the laboratory. So anytime a doctor tells you um, that they want an acrylic burr, they usually mean one of these. And these are actually um, pretty close to the size that the acrylic burrs um, are. They're used for outside of the mouth stuff and usually for to shape temporaries or to do um, adjustments in acrylic, such as the, uh, partials and dentures. And then of course, some of these uh, will be used in sur surgery, such as like um, if they need to split a tooth in half, they'll use surgical burrs and surgical burrs are actually kind of like the regular burrs, but much longer. 